Hi, this is Joe Maciars. Uh, I wanted to do another um, Apple Grapher application. Um, you might remember the last time we talked about where it was located. It was on the Mac hard drive under Applications, under Utilities, and then finally the Grapher software itself. Um, if you already have it on your dock, you might want to open that up as well. Um, what we're going to do is look at a 2D graph today, a very specific graph. We're going to look at uh, the slope-intercept equation. Generally, the slope-intercept equation is of the form y equals mx plus b. Now, I'm going to type this in, and right away it's going to give me an error. Uh, there's that error, because it doesn't know what to do with m and b yet. Uh, it's going to treat m and b differently than it's going to treat x and y. Let's go ahead and... Oops, sorry fix that program. Let's go ahead and put in a new equation. We can do that by going up to equation and hitting this uh, right from the menu or we can hit the shortcut key. That's what I did and you didn't see me doing that but that's what I did to get this y equals. So I'm going to put in m equals, change that y equals to m equals, oh let's call it 2. And we can see that this is somehow a little different than, or we're going to see that it's a little different than the Y or the X. We're getting this little green symbol here, which is telling us that M is a parameter. And what we're doing is we're going to let M equal 2. Uh, we're also going to put in something for B. I'm going to do that now. I'm going to put another new equation, and B will equal 1. We'll just choose that. And you can see we get our straight line. All of a sudden our equation is very happy. It's check marked, which is allowing us to see it. If we uncheck mark it, it, it disappears. And sometimes we're going to want to do that. Um, we're going to take a close look at what's going on here with some of these things. Uh, I just want to first point out that the x and the y that are in this equation are called variable variables. They're going to stay variables in the equation. When we pick a particular m and a particular b, like we're doing here, we're going to get a particular line chosen from all the possible non-vertical lines that y equals mx plus b can graph for us. So right now that's what we've got. We've got something that has a slope of 2 and a y-intercept of 1. I'm going to add one other thing to this to help us see what's going on. I'm going to take a new equation from the template. Now you'll see that this is the parametric equations and we're going to choose that but we're not going to use it like a parametric equation. And I'm not telling you what a parametric equation is uh, here. All I'm telling you is that we're going to use this as a point. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of all this, this t equals stuff. Just get rid of it. I'm, I like to put spaces in between my equal signs so that you see me doing a lot of that um, just to make it look a little nicer. Uh, we're going to pick a particular point. The point we're going to pick is going to be 0, B. And you're going to see that we get this little dot right here. Okay. Now, I don't know why it always comes up this particular way, but it does and it always bugs me. So, if you want to play with your lines and such, you go to Inspector and uh, then you can pick on uh, for example, this inner color, instead of being white, I like it to be dark. And I like my circles to be a little smaller, so I usually uh, set them up so they're right underneath that little R, and then they look you know, real pretty, like our uh, points that we like to graph. Okay, um, so M and B are going to be particular parameters that are picking out this line. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to play with one of those parameters, and we're not going to do it by hand we're going to do it with a special tool that the grapher has and that tool is called animate parameter you'll see that what we've got available to us now is a little slider here and it's a slider associated with the variable m because I chose m I had m highlighted when I picked that particular um, variable to highlight now uh, we have some various options here but before I go doing anything else I'm going to hit my settings here which allows me to pick the values I want these to be and this is pretty close to what I'd like I'm going to go from negative 4 to 4 and um, now this goes in a uh, discrete mode so as opposed to a continuous range so therefore I want to pick the endpoints and if you know anything about discrete, that means you have to add one more than your division. So by choosing 81 here, all of a sudden you see that I get 0.1, as opposed to if I chose 80, you'll see it'll come out really ugly. 
uh, for the divisions, and I just want some nice divisions. It can go up to 100 maximum, uh, but 101 it won't take. I don't know if the newer version will be better but uh, or allow more, but this one doesn't. We're just going to leave everything else the way it is, and we're going to hit OK here. And you can see all of a sudden now we've got a lot more divisions here. Well, I'm going to hit the play button and we're going to see what's going to happen. Now right here is where you're going to see M changing. This is my play button and in fact what we're doing is we're making ourselves, you know, if you like, an animation, a little cartoon. And we can see what's happening here. As M is increasing and now decreasing, the slope is changing. This is telling you exactly what M is doing. M is measuring the slope. Now we can see that we're in a position where the M's are negative. That means that as we move from left to right, we're falling, we're going downward. When the slope becomes positive, we're going to see, in just a moment here, that as you go from left to right, you're going to start moving upward. So these are positive slopes, and the other ones you just saw previously are negative slopes. It's moving a little slower than I'd like. I can pause this and I can also grab this and actually pick out particular values of interest. Now these are very high slopes. Think about the slope of your roof. Would you like to walk up this slope if this was the slope of your roof? Uh, I think you'd need some ropes or something. Even 45 degrees. Now 45 degrees will be at M equals 1. and Right there, that's 45 degrees. That would still be pretty hard to walk up. I think uh, a lot of roofs are more like 30 degrees, something like that. And uh, that was our zero degrees. That's our flat roof. Now, even though these values are negative, very big negative values, that is negative one and above, are very big slopes as far as uh, negative slopes. So the gentle slopes are occurring, let's say, roughly between negative 0.5 and 0.5, something like that. Okay? So what this is telling us is what this parameter in this equation is doing. This controls the steepness of the line. And you'll note that this point, the, the 0B that we've been looking at, this point right here, never changed as we played with the M. So, for example, this equation right now is y equals negative 0.6x plus 1. And this is what's being graphed. So because that we're not playing with the B right now, the B is always 1, it's always going to pass through this point. That's going to indicate to us what this point is about. This is the y-intercept. We call it the y-intercept because it, this is the place where the line, this line, crosses the y-axis. Okay. Now we're going to emphasize that by playing with the B now. We're going to do the same thing we just did with the M. We're going to go up to Equation, go down to Animate Parameter, and we're going to play with the B. Now I'm going to double check my settings because, yep, there it is. Usually it messes with my settings for some reason when I change my variables. I'm going to go back to 4 and negative 4 and uh, hit OK. Oh, by the way, we can also play with the line just like we played with the color of the point. A lot of times it's kind of easier if we see the line color as something different than black. So there I'm just changing it to green. And so now we can see that B, that B is our parameter and I can play this just like I played the M. And now you'll see that the slope stays the same. I've got the slope set at 2. It's a very steep slope. But what we can see is that the point on the y-axis is going with the line. Now if you're not really looking at a point, it could look like it's this point that's moving left and right or it could look like some point here is moving on a diagonal. But despite the fact that it could look like that, what's really going on is that this entire line is moving up and down. That's what B is controlling. And in a strict sense, B is really where it passes through the y-axis. So if I pause it right here, you can see our B value is 2.8, and that's exactly where this line is crossing the y-axis. And if I come down to, say, B equals 1, we're crossing at 1, Let's say negative 1, there we are crossing at negative 1, and there's negative 2.2. So, this gives you an idea now that there's a couple of things to look for in these kind of equations. First of all, what are the variable variables? Well, this entire line has x's and y's in it that are picked out specifically by picking out the parameters or the constant variables, the m and the b. You pick an m and a b, 
and you've picked out a particular line. Um, we are going, going to look at some more of these kind of parameter type of equations. There's quite a lot of them, but this is one of the most useful ones to know. Uh, this is really handy if you want to uh, get on the on the uh, any graphing calculator and play with these kind of things and get yourself used to this because this is an equation that gets used quite a bit. It has a lot of uh, uses in all kinds of different applications including other lines, other kinds of curves I should say, and uh, it's useful all in itself when you need straight line equations. Quite a lot of things that we do uh, in everyday life involve straight line equations whether we know it or not. Well that's it for this today. Um, I just want to refresh you that I'm from uh, A Tutoring Enterprises. That's my local tutoring business and uh, my website's at uh, www.210.com. Uh, if you want to get an appointment with me, you can call me at 402-421-3536. My email address is uh, 210, just like it's spelled here, at neb.rr.com, and that's also listed on my website. So if you need some help, go ahead and give me a call, and uh, I hope this has helped you uh, in your slope-intercept uh, equations. Thanks for viewing this.